There's two more right here. Yeah. Uh, if you were to use the government's contractor price of 80 cents solar, rooftop solar, for your home, for 1,000 kilowatt hours, which is the average home in Ontario, or was, you'd pay $800 a month just for the energy consumption. Is, you have to ask yourself, is that reasonable? Is it even conceivable to be thought to do that? I put a piece in the paper last summer. I, I explained what 80 cents meant. Well, the government did a knee-jerk reaction, and they jerked it down to 58, and they bounced back to 64. So now, what we have is the new contracts of 64 cents and 43. 64 cents is the old rooftop or the ground mounts you see around people's homes today, and that'd be $640 a month if you were to use that yourself. So I say to you, would you ask somebody to pay $640 a month? Would you use it yourself if it cost $640 a month? No. Not a chance. What, with solar energy, it gets what you call mind preference. Solar can come on before our hydro system, our public power assets, have an opportunity to run. So they get a line privilege. So if I could put it quickly, we've got 20 units of power used a day in Ontario. Or 20,000 megawatts, really, on a daily load. And that's your peak load uh, for in industry through the week. But to give you the farther picture, Come the weekends and your holidays off, you have a reduction on all of that heavy load, weak load. And when you have that reduction, you, you, you come away from needing coal generation or natural gas generation. We got this Green Energy Act with their line privileges now coming in and shoving your, your nuclear power off, your state-of-the-art uh, power source in the material, nuclear and generation. It's got the right to push it offline. It's got the right to push your one cent water offline on the weekends. And, and that's your off-peak time. That's what everybody's to told you, right? That's off-peak. You, you can say, you can do your laundry on the weekends. If this, this format of power source keeps going, you will be doing your week laundry in the week time. Who could afford? Who, who can afford uh, this escalating interference of cost? You can. When you push uh, 64 cent solar on uh, into the grid at line priority, you have to pay 64 cents plus the 3.7 or 4 cents nuclear power because it's power at cost, whether you use it or not, you have to pay it too. So it's not 64 cents anymore, it's six, 68 cents. So it gets really expensive. And, and you may have read in a paper uh, where the government has said, well, we had to pay $6 million uh, to buy, to, to sell our power or for people to buy our power, because we got too much. We had to pay to get rid of it. The reason you got to pay to get rid of it is because if you set, shut down nuclear, it takes 72 hours to get it back up. It was in the paper. So if you keep putting this interference power online with not proper regulations, you destroy what you had in Ontario Hydro. What you had you was at secure, reliable, affordable power. What you have over here is all the opposite. Unsecure, unreliable, and certainly not affordable. None of it. So, as, as these dream seekers of wealth, people in this land, push, you, push our governments, we have to take a stand.
and somehow push back. And that's the point I make. I have spoken on foreign control, foreign, foreign drain off of your, your hydro bill dollars, and all the industrial solar money that leaves the province. I've spoken on that. Uh, this money, $1,000 an acre, may seem nice, but is this system necessary? And how does it affect the community? I spoke on that too. You wouldn't, you wouldn't charge yourself $630 a hydro bill a month just for the power usage. So think about it. Look at it. I just wanted to put it out there. And I hope I've covered the aspects of impact costs so, so that you can evaluate how you may act in the future. Thank you.